in the last video, we talked about lists. There are a couple of more things that we need to talk about lists, including matrices. Let's say that we had two lists. A equals bracket 1, comma 2, comma 3, comma 4, comma 5, bracket. B equals A. With lists, A and B are the same thing. If I change B, then A is also changed. Let's test changing B. B at index 0 equals 0. Print parentheses A. When we run the program, we can see that even though A was a list with 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and we didn't change A, A's value at index 0 is now 0. We assigned B at index 0 to 0. What we find out is that changing B also changes A. With lists, B equals A is an assignment by reference. Assignment by reference is a fancy way of saying that there's an assignment pointing B to A. B equals A is not a copy of A. B and A are the same variable. The variable B points to where A was created, so changes to B affect A. Instead of doing this example with lists, if I were to use integers or strings, assigning B to A would be assignment by value. Assignment by value means that there is a copy of the variable, which makes B independent to A. Remember that assigning B to A with lists is an assignment by reference. B and A are the same variable. This aspect of lists affects how we use lists in functions. Let's make a function to delete the end of a list. Now let's delete all of this stuff and write lists underscore argument equals a new array with 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And we're going to create a function def space delete underscore last underscore variable with a parameter called list underscore parameter. And we will just delete the last value of the list. And we will call our function that we just created and put in the list that we created, list underscore argument. This function will delete the last value of a list. When you use a list as an argument in a function, the list is passed by reference. Passed by reference means that whatever we do to the variable will change the original. Even though the parameter has a different variable name, the list underscore parameter and list underscore argument are in fact the same variable. List underscore parameter is not a copy of list underscore argument. There's only one variable. They are the same variable. Any change that happens to list underscore parameter affects list underscore argument. We can add a print parentheses list underscore argument to see if the deletion of the last value in list underscore parameter affects list underscore argument. When we run the program, we will see that list underscore argument has 1, 2, 3, and 4. 5, which was the last value, was deleted. If we were using integer or string parameters with functions, those arguments are passed by value. Passed by value means that there is a copy of the variable. The variables will be independent. Remember that using a list as an argument will be a pass by reference. The argument and parameter will be the same variable. We didn't talk too much about using a list in a list. A list in a list is used to create a matrix. A matrix is a fancy way of saying a table of data. Just think about a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. If we think about a list, it's just a row of comma separated values. The difference between a matrix and a list is that a matrix has rows and columns. A three by three matrix would be a three by three table with data. What a 3x3 table with data would look like is we can see it and imagine it as being something like this. Each row is a separate list, meaning that each row is enclosed in brackets. We can replace this and enclose each row with brackets. Then the entire matrix is contained in a list. We can erase all of this. And this is a matrix. We can write this matrix in a single line like matrix equals the bracket bracket, first row, one comma two comma three bracket. This is a list, then comma, then we create the second row, which is a list, and so on. The matrix is a list, then each row is a list element in the list. How we access a value in a matrix 
is we use the index from the row followed by the index of the column. For example, if I want to get the first value in the matrix, which would be row 0 and column 0, I would write cell equals matrix bracket 0 bracket bracket 0 bracket. You can extract any matrix value this way. Just think of using the double brackets, get the row first, then the column second. We can print the cell. When we run this program, we get 1 because 1 is at row 0, column 0. I can run the program right now and I get the 1 because I am accessing row 0, column 0 of the matrix. And 1 is our first value of the matrix. You can use for loops with matrices. I can delete all of this print statement and write for i in range len of matrix, for j in range len matrix at index i, and then in that for loop, I can print matrix i j. In this for loop, the first for loop, loop traverses the rows. Then the second for loop looks at the length of the current row in order to traverse the columns. Inside the column for loop, we're accessing the cell at the row column index. When we run this program, we will get every value in the matrix by the first row, then the second row, then the third row. We're traversing by row and column. So we go left to right and then we go downward. We get the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The last thing that we'll talk about lists is that strings can be converted into lists and lists can be converted into strings. To convert a string into a list, you can use the dot split function. The dot split function works well with comma separated values. You know, the CSV file string that you'd normally use with Microsoft Excel or a different spreadsheet program. Let's say that we had a string, fruits equals apples, bananas, mangoes, oranges, strawberries. We can see that there are words in the string separated by commas. This string would be more useful to us as a list. Fruit underscore list equals fruits dot split parentheses a string with a comma. Inside the parentheses, you put the character or string that you want to separate the string by. I want to separate the string by its commas. Every time there is a comma, it creates a value in the list. Now, when we run the program, we can see that fruit underscore list is a list where each value is the fruit string before a comma appeared. Let's run the program and we get a list with apples, bananas, mangoes, oranges, and strawberries, each as a value in the list. Next, we can change a list to a string. Let's say that we had a list that looked like a sentence, so it'd be more useful to us as a string. Let's delete this stuff and write a new list called sentence underscore list. Sentence underscore list equals bracket r comma u comma learning comma python bracket. We can use the dot join function to join each value of the list together to make a string. Sentence equals quote with a space quote dot join parentheses sentence underscore list. I'll write that now. Before the dot join function, we put the string that we want to use to separate the values of the list. I want to put a space between each value of the list to make a proper sentence. Inside the parentheses, we put the list or list name. Print parentheses sentence because we want to print out sentence. I can print out the sentence and I'll get are you learning Python as a string. Let's run the program and see it in action. Are you learning Python? This is a string. We separated each value of the list with a space. Let's talk about tuples. Tuples are very similar to lists. They contain an order set of values like a shopping list or a checklist, just like a regular list. The di big difference between tuples and lists is that tuples are immutable, meaning that its values cannot be changed. Lists are mutable, meaning that list values can be reassigned and changed. You can create a tuple with the same setup as a list, but instead of square brackets, you use parentheses. Tuple underscore example equals parentheses 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 parentheses. 
However, even though you use parentheses to create a tuple, you use square brackets to access elements of a tuple. Let's say that we want to get the first element of this tuple underscore example. We would write first underscore element equals tuple underscore element bracket zero bracket. We can print this out by writing print parentheses first underscore element parentheses. When we run the program, we'll get one because one is the first value of the tuple underscore example tuple that we just created. Now, you might be thinking, why would we use tuples? You can't change the values in tuples. Tuples also lack many of the functions that we demonstrated that lists had in the last video. The main benefit of a tuple is that tuples are faster for constructing a list of values. If you need to create a list of values that you won't need to access and manipulate later, using tuples might be for you. For example, let's say that we want to create a function that swaps two values. We can write a func function called swap def space swap parentheses x comma y colon and we will return a new tuple with y comma x. We can call this function with one comma two and we can print swapped underscore values. In this function, we are creating a new tuple with x and y swapped with each other. Tuples are good for quick construction and usage. Tuple construction is faster than list construction. When we run the program, swapped underscore values variable will have a tuple with two comma one. Tuples being immutable are a tad more memory efficient, but it's also almost negligible. Most of the time, I use lists because there are many situations where I need to manipulate the values of a list. I would only use tuples whenever I have a simple function where I knew that I would not have to manipulate the values of the tuple beforehand. If you want a function to return a few values that won't be changed, feel free to use tuples.